the 61A exams start today, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't collaborate with other people during the exam. Doing so is actually not in your interest. It's also not right. Normally this is an easy decision for people because collaboration is also difficult if you're on campus and somebody's watching you. Now it's really easy and that makes the decision a little bit more complicated, but the right decision to not collaborate is still what you should choose. So I'm going to spend a minute telling you why and I really hope you take my advice. First, there's very little benefit to collaborating with somebody else on the exams this week. If you don't do well on the exams, this won't hold you back at all. You're still going to pass. You could probably pass this course just by guessing well because there's so much multiple choice on the exam, even if you don't know what you're doing. But you do know what you're doing. If you've worked through all of the homeworks and projects in this course, then you're going to be able to solve some of the problems and you'll be able to pass. And in this unique semester, passing is all you need in order to have a bright and successful future. If you pass the course, then you'll be able to declare computer science with grades in 61B and 70, regardless of whatever your 61A grade would have been. If you do get a high grade, it might help you declare a little bit, but probably won't matter in the end anyway. But the cost of collaboration can be very high, and this is something that people don't appreciate until it's too late. Sure, it's the case that in an online exam, detecting collaboration is more difficult, but we still manage to do it. We have some experience from midterm two, where people thought that they could collaborate, and then they left an evidence trail anyway, and now their life is much, much more complicated than it was before. It turns out that people who decide to cheat on exams aren't nearly as good at it as they thought they were, and they don't even seem to do that well on the exams even when they're collaborating. Now, I think only a few percent of students did this. At least we only caught a few. But still, even a small chance that you'll get caught makes the cost of collaboration much higher than the benefit on expectation. Because if you do get caught, then you fail the course, and it's worse than that. You jeopardize your chances of declaring majors, your reputation could be affected with future instructors, and you have to deal with the Office of Student Conduct, who might decide to suspend you or worse. And this process can take months. It's really not a good idea. Even if you leave no evidence, the person you're collaborating with might leave evidence. And then they'll be asked to tell who they were collaborating with. Can you really trust the person you're collaborating with when they have to choose between you and their academic future? Do you want to be in a position where you have to make such a choice with one of your friends? You really don't. It can have a horrible cost to your mental health to deal with this kind of stress. So the right call, even though the chance that we might catch you is rare, is to avoid that possibility entirely by not collaborating on the exam. The third reason is that being honest is actually more important than whatever score you get on your 61A exam. People have this sense, because they've been in school for so long, that whoever's best at problem solving is going to be the most successful in life. That's just not true at all. I've lived in the world long enough to see many examples of people who were competent, maybe even great problem solvers, but missed out on important opportunities in their life because they weren't perceived as reliable or trustworthy enough to be in a leadership position. This really happens. Basically, success in life comes from being able to get stuff done in collaboration with others, and that always involves trust. Trust and honesty are one of the most important characteristics you can have if you want to be effective in the world these days. And you're building your reputation now. The people that you know at Berkeley are people that you're going to work with in the future. You're also building your habits now. You might as well get in the habit of being honest and accountable about everything you do, because that is actually going to matter a lot for you in any kind of career that you pursue in the future. I know this could be hard to appreciate when, in fact, you're being scored on how many points you get on the exam. But remember, the points don't even really matter that much. All you got to do is pass and everything's going to be fine. We do have an honor code at Berkeley. It's not just to kind of keep things fair. It's also to develop good people. That's the point of a university, is to help people learn how to be effective in the world. 
and our honor code says that as a member of the UC Berkeley community, I will act with honesty, integrity, and respect for others. Go ahead and start embodying that now. If you've made plans to collaborate with somebody, you haven't done anything wrong yet. All you have to do is just not show up or tell them you've changed your mind and you don't have to worry about possible consequences down the road, which could be dire and really disrupt the path of your life. Thanks for listening. Good luck on the exam. I really do want you all to do well. I know you've been working hard for this, so don't screw it up with a poor decision. See you in a few hours.